Hello everyone, I am Sito Zhang from Light Trans International. In this talk, I'm going to talk about the modeling technologies for defective and especially metal surfaces based on the physical optics software Virtual Fusion. I would like to start with a short introduction of my colleagues and our teams. So I'm from Lighttrans, which is a high-tech company located in Vienna, a small city in the center of Germany. Lighttrans has been founded in 1999. Together with the partner company Viruski Photonics and the partner research group, the Applied Computational Optics Group from the University of Vienna, we develop corresponding technologies for the software virtual fusion for modeling and design of modern optic systems. Electrons is also, also responsible for the technical su support for trainings and possible engineering projects related to virtual fusion software. Now, the software has been distributed around the world from west to east and there are more and more users which uh, use our software for their engineering and research projects. Virtual Lab Fusion is a physical optics modeling and design software which aims to solve micro equations for the whole system. It is different than those single technology softwares uh, which based on finite element method or finite different time domain. WorkLab is a platform which enables the integration of different solvers for different components. And by that, we try to find a feasible and efficient solutions for the whole system. For example, there are different types of components which might appear in a complicated optical sy system nowadays. Like there are lenses, there are mirrors, there are prisms, there are gratings, and there are nano and microstructures. So we try to find proper and efficient solvers for those components and use them in combination. So it is not like a FEM or FDDT software. We use a combination of a lot of different solvers which are listed on the right side in a circle. And just give an example, probably for free space diffraction problem, you could easily use a diffraction integer instead of using a very complicated FETD solver. Now in this talk, I'm going to talk mainly about our solvers for gratings, for diffracted and meta lenses, and also diffracting beam splitters. That means those selected examples which are related for diffractive and meta surface applications. I will take the typical design procedure for meta lenses as an example, as a starting point of this talk. Nowadays, when people design a meta surface, usually they start from the two aspects. First, they find the face profile which they want. Depends on the aim, the method can be different. For example, ray tracing could be used for design of a meta surface face profile. While for meta surface meta grating, probably you want to start with a if the design. While on the other side, you must also look for the proper unit cell which could make up the complete meta surface. And for this part, usually you must use a rigorous micro solver like FDTD or FEM. With the result from the above procedures, you can distribute the unit cells of your meta surface, probably with different varying parameters over the whole surface, and you make the whole surface according to that. But this is just an initial design. Usually, the direct distribution of the unit cells doesn't make the optimized uh, performance. So there's usually necessary to have a post-optimization procedure. So that 
a short summary of the state of the art design procedures for Meta Surface. And in order to do that, very often people need to switch between different software packages. For example, usually you cannot find a ray tracing software, you cannot find a ray tracing function in the FTTD software, and vice versa. The question is that, okay, can we simplify this workflow? And our aim with Virtual Lab is that we want to provide you a seamless workflow within one platform. I'd like to start with one example, which is for the design and modeling of a blessed meta greeting. This example is taken from the work of Philippe Lalang at about 20 years ago which can be regarded as one of the earliest investigation in the field of meta surface and meta greetings. In this example, we will show how to design, how to model a blaze meta greeting. As its name says, it works as a traditional blaze greeting. But in comparison to the traditional blaze greeting, which uh, from which you see a subtle uh, greeting profile. The meta greeting shows a high diffraction efficiency for both X and Y polarizations. And also it is constructed by using a completely different way. It consists of especially varying square pillars, nano pillars. So how does this work? Okay, the first step in the design is as what we mentioned in the beginning. Analysis of the unit cell, that is, how to find the proper pro parameters of the nanopillars. In this case, we follow the work of Philippe Lalang, so we fixed the dimension of the unit cell to 380 nanometer and the height of the pillars to 545 nanometer. The material of the pillar is titanium dioxide, which has a relatively high reflective index for visible light. And in this step, we are going to vary the pillar diameters. In the figure on the right, you can see the result, which was done by WatchLife using the RCWA, uh, also known as FMM, free model method, in WatchLife. When you vary the pillar diameter, and if you look at, for example, the red curve, which represent the phase transmission, you can see that within, uh, let's say, the first 300 nanometer range, it covers almost a 2 pi range. And within this range, the black curve, which represents the efficiency, it remains relatively high, except at some resonant point. So, based on the previous analysis, we could, in the next step, we can distribute the pillars with different diameters at different positions. So, the aim of this design is that we want to make a blazed greeting. That means we want to make a greeting which will deliver a linear phase as an output in transmission. Therefore, we choose proper diameter values for the pillars. Well, as you can see from this red curve, if you have a relatively smaller uh, pillar diameters, it corresponds to a relatively small phase transformation. So we choose them properly, and then we select five of these pillars with five different diameters, and then we put these five pillars along the X direction at different positions. And this makes the period of the complete meta greeting. Next, well, after we have already composed the meta greeting, we can again put the greeting into the RCWA or FMM solver and to evaluate the performance of this meta greeting. Now here you can see the rigorous analyzed result. So for both TE and TM polarization states, we see a relatively high diffraction efficiency in the first diffraction order. The average 
gives a diffraction efficiency of about 77%. And this value corresponds to the reported result from Philip Alon very well. So is that, is the result previously the best one? As we mentioned, it's usually not. And because of the possible additional coupling and change of the uh, Peter diameters, usually we need to perform a post optimization. And so to finally get the best performance of the meta grating. And in this case, we say that based on the previous design, we want to additionally we want to vary the height, overall height of all pillars. We want to vary the position of each pillar, and we also want to vary the diameter of each. So we use the RCWA together with a downhill simplex optimization in watch Lab fusion. By the way, all of this optimization and design, they can be done in the single uh, platform watch Lab fusion software. Now here you can see the um, optimization result. So what I show here is just a part of this whole iterations in the uh, optimization. But you can see that the convergence is obtained quite fast, just about, about 100 steps in the optimization. We get a optimized average efficiency for both TE and TM. So previously, we start with the average efficiency, which is around 77%. And now we have some value over 85%. And here we have a brief comparison before and after the post analysis, a post optimization of the grating. And in this case, we can see an increase of about 10 percentage point from the initial design to the finally optimized grating. And all of this procedure is done within one software platform. Next, I'd like to show you another example which we want to design a meta grating for non partial beam splitting. In contrast to the previous example, in this case, we want to design a two dimensional grating, two dimensional meta grating, like shown in this graph as a top view. And this is a grating used for splitting one input beam into three times three, in total nine orders. And we want to split the three times three beams into a relatively large angular range, which is typically used nowadays for a LiDAR system. So in contrast to the previous example, where we want to design a blazed meta grating. In the previous case, it is easy to find a desired phase. We want a linear phase. But in this case, we want to find a beam splitting grating. And, and it's already not so trivial to find what is, the, uh, let's say, the uh, desired phase transformation. And for this purpose, we use the iterative fully transform algorithm IFTER. By the way, this algorithm is also included in virtual life fusion software. So you don't need to switch, you don't need to program yourself, and you can just use within the same software the IFTER algorithm to design the initial phase distribution. And in this case, we run the IFTER algorithm for multiple times for, uh, uh, from, from, from random initial phase. And therefore, you can see, you can also get multiple possible solutions here. For the meta surface design, for the meta grating design, we select one of the result as a starting point, for example, this one. And then it comes to the same procedure. We, we need to find the proper unit cells, which can be used to realize the phase distribution that we want. So in this case, we use a circular pillar, which is also polarization insensitive. And similar procedure as previous, we vary the pillar, pillar diameter, and the result is shown in the graph on the right side. This is a rigorous analyzed result from RCWA or FMM. 
While this case, we choose the pitot diameter range from about 50 nanometer to uh, 260 nanometer. Here we have a coverage of two pi phase and also relatively stable and high diffraction efficiency. Then we can distribute the nanopillars according to the desired phase map, a phase, a phase map over the whole surface, like shown here. According to a certain phase value, we find the proper, the corresponding pillar diameter, and then we place this pillar at corresponding position on the surface, and so on, for all the pillars. Let's evaluate the performance of this pillar first. Again, we use the rigorous FMM to evaluate it, and now here you can see how the diffraction visions of the three times three orders look like in the far field. So for the initial design, the overall efficiency is not bad, it's almost 80%, but if you look at the, uni the uniformity, the distribution of the energies over each order, then you would see that while well, they are not so evenly distributed, and in the initial state, it sees a uniformity error between the peak and valley, that means the minimum and the maximum diffraction efficiencies, is about 25%. So we must improve this because this is uniformity is usually an important parameter for a LIDAR applications. And therefore, we use the same strategy as we used for the previous blazed gridding design. We apply RCWA or FMM together with a downhill simplex optimization. In this case, we um, let's say we just try another possibility for the uh, optimization. We didn't vary all the parameters, but we just vary the pillar diameters while keeping pillar positions unchanged. And in the graph on the right side, you can see how the sum efficiency and the uniformity error, the peak to valley value, is changing during the optimization iterations. So the black curve for the sum efficiency is not changing, obviously, during the optimizations. So that means it remains at about 80%, while the uniformity error drops from about 30% to finally below 10%. And that's just the result of changing the pillar diameters. Let's have a look at the finally optimized meta grating. So each pillar remains at their original positions, but just with their diameters slightly changed. And in this case, you can see that the overall efficiency remains at about 80%, while the uniformity error peak valley value has been changed from previously over 30% to about just 3.1%. And in the graph, which shows the diffraction efficiencies in the Cartesian angle space, you can also see very clearly that all the nine spots are evenly distributed in the far field. So that just shows the whole optimization and design procedure. And all these analysis and design procedures, they are all done within one platform, much like Fusion. Alright, finally, I'd like to come back to the basic concept of virtual life Fusion. So as mentioned, this is not a single software uh, software, but it is a platform which integrates different softwares for different cases. And therefore, you can perform the design and analysis of either a single device or to put it into a system and to see how it works and how it how your system works. And in this talk, we showed examples for many for meta surface meta gratings. And virtual lab software is not just limited to that; it can be also applied for various types of uh, devices. And that is the benefit and that is the uniqueness of this physical optics software platform, which I fusion. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us to contact Lightrans International for your particular task and questions.
Thank you for listening.